My church is not big for too many introductions, but I'll go ahead and do mine. First, giving honor to God. To my church back home, Sweet Home Baptist Church, to the church that I go to in Nashville, Ambassadors for Christ, and to the university that I attend, Belmont University, and to all of my colleagues, my newfound friends, and those that share the blessing and the burden of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, I will be coming today from Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 through, and I'll stop at 3. First of all, let us pray. Father God, we just ask him to speak today in this place. Fall fresh, you are anointed. And allow us to go out changed. Allow us to go out refreshed, resurrected, renewed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, can these bones live? The 21st century American church is not what it used to be. Oftentimes caught in church scandals of sinfulness and shame, we have allowed the very idea to take of sin to take precedent over the idea of redemption. We allow sin to run rampant in our congregations without so much as an acknowledging glance. And the fact of the matter is that if we were to look at what sin really is, which at its basics is the act of making a God out of our carnal desires, we see that the very notion of living sinful lives while claiming Christianity moves us into idolatry. What a hopelessness. We see that our denominations are at war with each other. Where we fuss and fight over whose doctrine is right and whose is wrong to the point where the doctrinal standings of our denominations take precedent over the biblical writ and thus fragments us from each other, further creating idolatrous congregations that would rather be known by their denominational name than by the Christ that they serve. What a hopelessness. Wow. <laughs> and when we look at the non-Christian, we see that there are some who look to us for hope but soon realize that we are oftentimes in the same predicament and circumstances that they are and do not have the reputation, the resources, the respect, and no longer the hope to offer hope. What a hopelessness. It has gotten to the point where even our congregants no longer believe that Jesus alone can truly change lives. In fact, looking at the lifestyles of the 21st century American Christian, we live in a limbo between what is known as the cultural good, which sometimes might not always be so good, and the biblical truth, usually choosing a Jesus that conforms to our liking, rather than choosing the Jesus that required change upon accepting him. What a hopelessness. But we are not the only ones that deal with hopelessness. Mm -hmm. We see that the Israelites are dealing with hopelessness. Mm -hmm. They've been exiled to Babylon. We see that Ezekiel, along with the first wave of exiles, are living in a place of hopelessness. You see, while they were over in Israel, they began to have idol worship. They began to worship other gods, make, make claims to other gods. They literally prostituted themselves out spiritually to other gods. And all the while Ezekiel now is fighting against false prophets. Prophets that will tell the people of Israel that they will soon be going home, that, that where they're at is only for a short time, but Ezekiel says, get comfortable where you are. Because the things that we have done in our own homeland will need to be reprimanded. And so we see that Ezekiel is speaking to the people, telling them that they need to get comfortable. But there is also hope. We see that Ezekiel in this text is driven out into a valley of dry bones. These dry bones symbolizes the catastrophic hopelessness of the people. The valley is a symbol of a battle, a spiritual battle that is being fought at the time where everyone has been obliterated and no one is being able to be buried properly. Mm -hmm. Thus this burial that they have gone through has left them out to the elements and has shamed their people. Wow. 
Can I talk to somebody right here? Yeah. Maybe we are in the predicament that we are in. Because we have left our sinful, not, sinful lives out to bed. Maybe we are living in a, in a place and in a way that when we are dealing with these spiritual battles, we are losing and we have no time to bury the sin that we're in. Yes, sir. Thus, we're bringing shame on the house of God. Thus, we're bringing shame on our congregations. Thus, we're bringing shame on the people that we love. Mm -hmm. But, as preachers of the gospel, how do we combat hopelessness? Mm -hmm. Well, first, we need to know who has the power to resurrect. Uh -huh. You see, Ezekiel knew who had the power. He understood that although he could preach, Although he could prophesy, wow. although he might be able to win people's hearts, he knew that yes. he did not have the power to resurrect. Yes. But there are some people out here who will say that because of their preaching, mm -hmm. because of their healing ability, because of their prophetic word, that they have the power to resurrect lives. But there is somebody that is more powerful than ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I talk to somebody right here? There was a man by the name of Job who ran into a person who was more powerful than him. Wow. Job understood that he was a righteous person, but what he did with that was he thought that because he was so righteous, that he did not have to go through the things that he went through. Wow. And so this man that is more powerful than him said, Who are you that you should question me? Come on, man. Don't you know that I laid the foundation of the earth? Don't you know that I keep all creation intact? You don't even have the knowledge to understand what I am doing. Who are you to question Take me? Take him to the cross. Take to the cross. Can I tell you a man who has all power? Who? A man who walked on the walk. A man who healed the sick. Yes, a man who fed 5,000. A man who had more medicine in the hem of his garment. Speaking the word of God does not mean 